Hi, my name is Alec and I own Druid Dice. Typically I make Dice Masters for casting, but I've gotten a lot of questions on what the next step is on creating your custom dice. One of which is, how do I make molds? And how do I get the bubbles out of these dice after I've made castings? So today I'm going to show you how to put together the cheapest option, which is a Harbor Freight pressure pot. On top of that, a couple of P's and Q's when you're doing the process. And we'll get everything set up and ready to go. Now, there are a few tools you're going to need in order to assemble a pressure pot. You can usually find it on sale at Harbor Freight uh, for about $80 after coupon. And sometimes they have flash sales where it goes even as low as $60 or $70. You'll also need a compressor. I typically recommend just getting the cheapest style compressor they have at Harbor Freight. If you're looking for a little bit more budget friendly and you want to save yourself $30, $40, you can use a bike pump or a cheap car tire compressor. Just know that this tutorial is focused on assuming you're buying the cheap Harbor Freight hot dog or pancake style compressor as well. So, as far as getting it connected, once you open it up out of the box, you'll have it set like this. It'll be bare bones, you'll lift the lid up, inside the packing material will be the regulator, as well as a handle, and sometimes some odds and ends fittings, though not always. You'll also need to pick up a few other items. First off is going to be a hose of some kind. Now, they typically in store have offcuts of around three to five feet for super cheap that already come with the uh, fittings that you'll need for the hose and put disconnects. If they don't have that available, then just any three fourths standard air compressor hose should work. And of course, I'll have everything linked down below that I'm discussing that you'll need for purchase. The other thing that you'll need is an additional quick disconnect. Typically, you can get a kit that has the quick disconnect as well as the hose adapters that you need to fit these if your hose doesn't have it on it. You'll also need a 1 fourths NPT ball valve and a 1 half NPT ball valve. So when you take into consideration the pressure pot itself, the compressor and the fittings, you're looking at dropping about $130 to $150 in order to get a ready-to-go setup that you can quickly start casting your own silicone molds as well as bubble-free dice and other resin art. For the handle, we're going to set that aside. We don't need that right now. First thing I want to focus on is the regulator itself. So there's a couple key things to remember on this. The regulator has a valve. This is going to control how much pressure it is allowing. At a certain point, it's going to trip and it's going to stop letting that pressure in and it kind of acts as a check valve. We'll just open it up all the way and let the compressor and the ball valves do the work. With this, you're going to take your small fitting, your quarter inch NPT ball valve, as well as the additional quick disconnect that you purchased, either by itself or as part of the pack. Those are both going to attach onto our regulator. Now, the reason we do this is that way we can have air coming in. It shows us what pressure the tank is currently at as the air is coming in, and then a backup release valve as the 3 fourths inch is going to be our main release valve. The first thing you want to do in prepping these is Teflon tape. Now you can also use Loctite. Uh, Loctite Red is a very popular option. I like my fittings to be removable in case I ever upgrade to a different pot or have a project or if there's one gets damaged. That way instead of fighting with the Loctite off, I can just quickly use a little brute force and pop the Teflon tape right off. This is a perfect example. I took apart this pressure pot so I can show you this demonstration. Now Teflon tape is only going to cost you a buck. Um, it's not sticky or tacky like regular tape if you've never worked on it. It's actually made of uh, Teflon plastic material and this is going to allow us to wrap these threads and close all the little tiny gaps in between the male and female threads where they made up. Now when you're wrapping Teflon tape it's gonna be a pain. 
you're gonna be grumpy and you're not gonna like it. It's gonna feel like it's not going on there at first. I recommend pinching the tape around it, the thread and then just getting it on there, one hand in there to support it like a tape roll and that way you have your thumb and you can apply even pressure. Now it doesn't have to be perfect pressure and the tape drop doesn't have to be amazing. But you're gonna wrap it about five to 10 times. Just about until you see, all right, this is looking like, how am I gonna thread this on here? Give it one more wrap at that point. And we'll call that good. It sticks to itself and I like to give it a couple twists just so it gets into the grooves of the male thread. We're gonna go ahead and wrap our other side and the base. Don't forget to wrap that at this stage. We're assembling everything on this to make lives a little easier for ourselves as we go through the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap these other two threads up real quick and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we've got our threads completely wrapped with Teflon tape and we're gonna go ahead and get the fittings on there before putting it onto the lid itself. So you gotta do your input on the right hand side if you've got the gauge away from you. Left hand side if you're looking at it directly. And I usually just put it on there by hand just until it gets kind of tight. Now if this handle gets in your way, there's a little nut here, you can pop that off with a pair of pliers or a small socket wrench and that'll get it right off and it'll help you. But since we're putting this on off the lid, we're not gonna run into that issue, so we don't need to remove it as of yet. So, we're gonna go ahead and take our size 19. Well, this is a millimeter. And hold the regulator as you tighten it on. I'll get to a point where it doesn't want to really go anymore. Try to get one or two past that. You also want to be careful to not twist or bend the gauge itself. So now that you've got that tightened on, almost as tight as you can, I like to lay it flat on its back, put my hand over the top of it so I'm not putting any pressure on the regulator gauge. Put it on right here, and then push away from you to tighten. So you're getting just that extra little bit of tightness because that's where your bubbles are gonna come in. Because once you put the pressure in here, it's gonna wanna do everything it can to escape. That way it can equalize. So let's, get, let's see if we can't get one more out of it. Oh, there it is. All right, so we've got that on there good and tight. Now, looking at the other side where we've got the ball valve, I'm gonna go ahead and switch wrenches. Let's see, this is gonna be the size 16, I think. Yep, size 16 in millimeter. We're just doing the same thing. You do wanna give the handle some thought here, but having full travel is nice. So you see on the back end here, I've got full range of motion to open and close it. Whereas if I tightened it all the way to where it was on the front side, it may bump into this housing where the gasket is and interfere with being able to open or close it fully. And another little trick, it's fairly cheap metal. These little handles, you can just bend them up a little. And now you've got your full range of motion. This is the point where we're gonna go ahead and set this aside and move on to the lid. Now, your pressure pot is gonna come with a tube that would typically go down into the bottom and allow the paint to be pushed up and into the paint sprayer. That tube's just gonna interfere with the insert we create, so we're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. But I really recommend getting either a good pair of plier vice grips or putting it in a bench vise, tightening it up, and then twisting the lid itself. Because these are typically epoxied in by Harbor Freight, and that's gonna make it quite the pain to get off. So if you start hearing some cracking or see some white chipping as you're doing that, don't be scared. That's just the epoxy giving way. On the other side is a deflection valve. So what this does is as the air comes in through what will be our air inlet, the instead of going straight down and causing splatters on the paint, which in our case is going to be resin and silicone for molds, it deflects it outwards. So that we do want to leave on. So we're going to flip it over. 
Sit on the table, and you'll have two valves here that you can work with. Now the center is where our handle goes. Like I said, don't worry about that. We've got a paint outlet and an air inlet. And we're gonna be working with the paint outlet side for now. So just like before, we're gonna take your Teflon tape and we're gonna wrap this outlet. Okay, so I've got it on there. It looks like it's too much, but remember, not too much. Five to 10 wraps and then one extra for good luck. Now this is where you're probably gonna to to remove this handle. I recommend just using some pliers real quick to grab it, that nut, and just give it a twist. So put it on there just like before. It's important to make sure you get that handle in a position that's gonna be easily accessible for you. So you really wanna be mindful of how you've got it situated on here, because if you've gotta move that or rotate it, you don't wanna be fighting with the lid trying to get it back on. We've got that on there good and tight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and replace the handle. Hello, Alec from the future here. We'll get back to Alec from the past here in just a few moments, but unfortunately we lost some data in the editing process. Now, this regulator is already attached, but we did the crucial part of assembling the ball valve and the quick disconnect before placing on the lid. So I'm just going to go over how to correctly attach it to the T valve and make sure that you get a good tight seal because this is one of the more difficult parts. So you want to take your size 16 and size 14 wrench. 16 is going to grab the base of the free spinning nut and the 14 is going to grab the nut that's affixed to the base of the regulator assembly and that's where you'll take it and you'll pull them inward. So this one you're going to be twisting to the right, the small nut on the regulator you'll be twisting to the left and torquing them together. Last thing I'm going to talk about now is the pressure safety valve. Now you can go out and get a higher quality one if you would like that peace of mind or if you just don't trust the Harbor Freight safety valve, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's your life and the life of your loved ones and your house and your stuff. So you need to make sure to keep it safe to your comfort level. I go ahead and use the one that comes with it. I've tested it and I'm comfortable with the range that it pops, so to speak, in. So to adjust that range on the inside of the pressure valve right here, where you see the key ring and the black rod, that's what actually pops out, up and out. You can pull on it, it's got a spring whenever it hits a certain pressure because that spring can only handle so much tension force on. Now using a pair of tweezers or a small screwdriver or other tool you can get in there and rotate this just like you would a screw or any other dial and that's how you tweak in your maximum safe pressure. One tip I'll give you here with this you can surely a line where you have met the lid with the pot so that way you can find where the gasket sits best as these gaskets are notoriously bad for keeping a uniform pressure. Sometimes you just have to keep rotating this lid and rotating it until you find the right spot for your lid and pot to make together without any leaks coming out of that gasket. You'll start to see your pressure gauge start to go up. Keep in mind with these Harbor pressure pots, they're really not meant to go above 60, but for safety's sake, I don't like to push mine past 45, 50. So just a little bit of pressure here, we're at one bar. That should be enough for you to safely check your gaskets and for bubbles. So you'll just take your water here, just get a little bit on my finger, and put it right over your joints. Don't trust Harbor Freight. Remember to check the seals that were already in place when we unboxed this. If you don't see any bubbles at this point, it doesn't mean you're off scot-free. Sometimes those small areas can be so small that not until you get in upper pressure levels that it actually starts to bleed through. 
something you wouldn't notice until you've already cast, gone to bed because you were up till 2 a.m. making dice like every night, to wake up to a depressurized pot and a failed casting because that air got in and the bubbles expanded. So let's go ahead and throw this compressor back on for a bit and get it up to operating pressure. <laughs> So we're now at operating pressure, which, like I said, I like to do around 40 to 50 PSI. Right now, I've got it at 40. That's where I like to stop and test the pressure valve itself. So, like I said before, taking a small tool that can fit in there, it's important that you do this while it's under pressure. Now, I recommend getting earplugs or maybe putting on noise canceling headphones if you're sensitive to loud sounds. As you're tweaking this, it's going to pop where the pressure is going to quickly start to release and it is very loud. Same as when you're depressurizing by opening the valve and you're ready to remove your pieces, that is also very loud. You can use a towel or other fabric or even your hand to muffle it as it comes out. Um, but uh, the first time it opens, make sure to let your significant other or uh, remove the house pets from the room because it is <laughs> gonna scare them. So, with this pressure valve, you can get into those grooves and then rotate it. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna just go left for loose until we start to hear it hiss. Just like that. You hear that hissing? That's it about to pop. So it's going to release the pressure a little bit before it pops. And if you notice, you should be seeing the pressure slowly going down. Now, when it pops, that's when it's going to be a lot quicker of a process. So that lets you zero in on where you want pressure. Now remember to keep adding pressure to it. Now that I've tested it and I know that it works at 40, that's when I'm comfortable enough to bump it up to 60 and test it for maximum pressure. Now that we've got it, we're going to get back in here and adjust it. Now you'll notice it's a lot more sensitive at the higher pressure, which is exactly where it should be. Now that there's more pressure in there, it wants to pop more easily. I'm going to get it just to where it's hissing, and then take it back just a not even a quarter turn. So tighten it back up just a little bit, just so that if I don't hear anything, if I'm not directly on it, because we want it to not have air leaking. But if when I touch it, the air is going to come out because I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on that valve. So now you've got a fully pressurized pot and you adjusted your safety valve. And this is when you want to triple check your fittings at maximum pressure. So go ahead and do that again real quick. There we are. And as expected, I'm not having any leaks on this pressure pot. I was really aggressive with my Teflon tape. And because of that, it is nice and set. Now, with the quick release, you can remove it. You'll get a little bit of pressure loss from the initial disconnect, but a quick release will hold pressure as a valve. So you don't have to keep it hooked up to your pressure pot overnight. If you need your air compressor for other tools or other uses around the house, um, or if you just say pressurize in the garage and then bring the pot inside to where the temperatures are more right for curing and casting, or vice versa. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I hope that helped you set up your Harbor Rate pressure pot. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on my Etsy, Druid Dice Shop, or you can contact us on the Dice Makers Discord or subreddit. Those will be linked down below as well. If there's anything else you guys would like to see me cover in future topics, please let me know. And